Hey garden friends, we are back in the greenhouse today and we're going to seed up some yummy plants for us, our summer garden. So come on back. Plus I'll update you on a few other things that I had done recently in the past and how they're doing. So let's get rolling. If you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and or share with your friends. Somebody may enjoy this content or this stuff. So, number one, I'm going to tell you about some things coming up, or at least one thing I know of, and that is how to take delphinium cuttings to root. This is one I did uh, last week, week before, before we went on our week's long business trip, and it's doing fabulous. And I'm going to show you coming up in another video, as soon as the snow melts, how I do that. And maybe hopefully tomorrow, it seems like the snow is melting really quick today. I can get to that. But in the meantime, I have tomatoes that I need to sow. Now, a couple months ago, I winter sowed some out in the garden. I will also update you on my winter sowing containers today. So hopefully I won't forget that. Um, I get going and then I forget things, you know me. But anyways, today I wanted to get some seeds, tomato seeds started. Now I didn't start them earlier because there's just no point. They just get tall and leggy and they never do as well on a light rack as they will out here in the garden or in the greenhouse later once we have conditions that uh, they'll thrive in. Right now, like last week we had beautiful, beautiful conditions. 60s, lows in the 40s, they would have done fine even out here. But this week we're getting snow, lows down into the 30s. The tomatoes won't like that even in the greenhouse. This is an unheated greenhouse. So um, that's why I don't start them extra early because then you're just potting up and potting up and potting up. Extra work, not necessary. Now, even though I am a zone 8B, my last frost date is very late in May. Therefore, you know, there's other zones lower than me whose last frost date is earlier than mine, and they can plant out earlier. So it doesn't go by zones, it goes by your growing conditions in your garden. I know a lot of people get that confused. I have a whole video, blog post, etc., on what growing zones tell you and what they don't. Um, yeah, I even saw on Park Seed, they had last frost date by zone, a whole chart, and it had me. I should have already been past my last frost date, and that's totally not Correct. So you can see how even reputable sites can give you incorrect information. And if you were to plant out before then and you got a hard frost, you'd lose all your plants you started. So that's really kind of sad. I need to write to them and say, hey, you guys need to update this. But I haven't done that yet. Okay, so tomatoes. Now I have several that are favorites. Now last year, I did a classic beefsteak tomato and it was from a dollar store package of seeds. What I got was some kind of cherry tomato. I do not know what it was, but it certainly was not the classic beefsteak. So this time I bought from Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds and I did that, uh, I bought the classic beefsteak. Yes, I know many times you can find them at garden centers, but have you seen what little vegetable plants are going for now? And so I just thought I would go ahead and start them from seeds. I have great success with my tomato plants. I start from seeds. And last year we built the little DIY greenhouse and that helps me extend my garden season because it's very short here in the mountains of Northern California, even though I'm a zone 8B. So one of my favorites is this heirloom tomato. It's Camp Joy Cherry Tomato. Now I've had friends who swore by uh, gold. What's that gold one? Um, not gold nugget. Anyways, it's a gold cherry tomato and every sun gold. And I grew that and compared to this, I threw them away. Oh, well, I didn't they throw them away. I fed them all to the chickens. Number one, the skin was tough. Number two, the flavor did not even come close to these. And uh, number three, they split very, very easy. And so you'd get the mildew. So as they came off the plant, I just keep, kept feeding them to my chickens. So I will never grow sun gold again because it just doesn't work for me. So this is when Baker Creek sent to me tomato spoon. You see how tiny those are? Hopefully it, it, it uh, focused for you. But 
So this was free, and you see how many tomatoes fit into that spoon? So I thought this would be an interesting one to grow. Um, oh, I have some coleus I wanna sow today too. So here's another one. Now, brandy wine is a favorite of mine, brandy wine. But you don't, it takes a long time for me to get it to come to ripen. And um, then you don't get a whole lot of fruit. Though with all the choices I have, I don't need a whole lot of fruit, but the ones you get are just so yummy. And another one that is a favorite is called Costaluto Genovese. And it is an heirloom Italian sauce tomato that is to die for. It is wonderful in sauce. I made a bunch of marinara one year. Oven roasted marinara with it. I have the recipe on my blog and I'll link to it. Um, in the description box below. But when I saw that, this is from Swallowtail Garden Seeds, they had combined them, and this one's called Genuine. So it's a combination of the Costa Luto Genovese and brandy wine. So two of my favorites and one tomato. And I grew this, not last year, the year before, loved them. So I was gonna go grow those again. So these are older seeds, so I'm gonna ex sow extra. Tiny Tim. Now this one is, I was gonna grow for uh, testing it out. My husband is developing a vertical grow machine that's all autonomous and um, we need something short and squat and this is, will fit the, the bill. This is Tiny Tim tomato seed. So I wanted to test them out. I think, what was the height? The height was total of 12 inches or something. Very, very short. So that is what I'm going to plant. So those are the ones I'm gonna plant. I winter sowed my super sweet 100s and if I can find that seed packet in here, I will go ahead and sow some of those too, because none yet have germinated in my winter sowing container. So I wanna make sure that I get some. It probably will, and if I took my winter sowing condi conditions container into the house and put it on a heat mat, probably they would germinate. But I think that would be cheating. I wanted to see if they'd come up from you know, being winter sowed. So, all right. So you'll notice I have some white stuff here in my soil. Can you see this? I might have to bend my camera down a little bit for you guys. Anyways, I have struggled tremendously this year with fungus gnats. All of my tricks I've been using um, at first work, but I've got fungus gnats and other things, whether it's my house plants or whatever, and they go over to the ones that have been sterilized, the soil and they just keep getting infested in my plants and it's driving me nuts. So this is diatomaceous earth that I have put on here and I will mix it in. Now this soil right now is fairly dry. So it will do the job of killing out any grubs, um, the fungus gnats, etc. ahead of time. And it's just an added thing I'm doing to try to control the fungus gnats. And then I will sprinkle more on top if I see fungus gnats coming out of my containers. It's been a year. So, and I will tell you, I sowed the gomfrina in my big tray. Um, it was the burpee one. And it had um, the soil or seed starting mix it had in it was compressed uh, coconut guar. And they loved it. Yes, it was, it was, um, didn't have any, so, anyways, as I was saying, my battery died, so sorry about that. Um, yeah, so now I'm trying an extra measure here. Uh, the coconut coir, they went to that like crazy once it got moist. So whatever was already in my plants in the house, it, it was just like a call to them to come and infest it. And that is the ones I've had the worst, worst problem with. It was the coconut coir. So, um, yeah. I'm going to be very careful in stirring in the um, diatomaceous earth. You can see it's very, very white. And then after I get this stirred in, I'm going to be careful because I don't want to breathe it in. It's not good for your lungs. Get out any debris here. Obviously, some things have gotten in here from other plants or something. I'm not sure. It's been a week. I've been gone for a week, so I'm kind of catching up here. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna put some perlite, extra perlite in here. And we're gonna go from there. I'm gonna stir that in very carefully too. <clears throat> so 
So what have you guys been sowing? Getting all your sowing, your uh, seeds started that you want. I was gonna tell you, um, now I've told you before, I'm zone 8B, and that zones across the country um, differ in growing conditions. And I'm just now starting my coleus, my tomatoes, and other things like that. Whereas you go over to um, a blog, or vlog, called um, Video Channel. She's a mad gardener. Now she's in Texas. Oh, I can't remember her first name, I'm sorry. Um, she's in Texas, uh, Zone 8A. And she, her, she did beautiful with her coleus. They are just massive and gorgeous. And she's putting a lot of things outside that I couldn't even dream of putting out right now. So her conditions, even though our zones are, are similar, are completely different. So she can be planting out now, whereas I can't, I don't have a, a prayer of planting out at this time. So yeah, it's funny how that is and how people get that so confused. Okay, so I have some containers. Let me reach over here. Oh, I know what I wanted to do. I wanted to tray sow my tomatoes instead of putting them in six packs. And I think I don't have any trays. Oh, yes, I do. I forgot. Now I do have my um, burpee planters with the silicone bottoms, but I like to just um, sow in flats or trays. It saves room, they do very well. Um, I have read that when you plant them all together in one container, like a tray, they actually help each other um, as they're germinating and et cetera, and growing a little bit. And then you prick them out. It's called pricking out when you pull them out. And um, you put them into individual containers. So that's what we're going to do. Now I will have um, some markers that I can divide it with because I'm not going to sew um, so many tomatoes of one particular variety and I want to know which ones got put where. So I filled up my tray. I'm going to shake it. I did, I got more, it's not even there. Now, as soon as they get two sets of leaves, they'll have that, what they call the cotyledon seeds. <laughs> I know I'm not pronouncing it correctly. And then they'll get their true leaves. That's when you can pot them up into individual containers. A lot of times mine will get a little bit bigger before I do it, and that's okay too. So, we've got that. I'm gonna put this over here out of the way for the present. And then we will start sowing seeds. Let me see if I've got some markers here available. Try to get ahead of the game. You know what I mean? So can you see down here? Let me move this over this way. And we'll see how that works. Okay, we will start with our tiny Tim. And um, I'm not too, too careful in doing stuff. I just get it done. These seeds are real tiny. Boy, there's a bazillion of them in here. So maybe I'll just um, broadcast, meaning I'm not going to put them so far apart. I'm just going to sprinkle them on here in an area. And we will go from there. So I probably am doing 20-some seeds. But that's okay. I can give them away if I keep them. If not, I can compost them. And you might think that's silly, but when you have that many seeds... Yes, and a lot of times I, I admit I cannot kill a plant. So I might be dreaming and saying that I would um, throw them away. But sometimes time is of the essence, So and I am in a hurry. And so um, I just will have to go with that tiny Tim. I don't have to put tomato because I know I'm planting tomatoes in here. So I am going to put my glasses on so I can see right where the divider line is for those. And I put the name that's on the tag closest to the area where I sewed them. Okay, next one. Now these I will, this is the genuine. Now I will sew extra. I'll sew all of them because what I have left is probably about six. And I'll sew them in a single file so that um, I don't take up too much space. Because I gave the Tiny Tims a whole big space. And... Knowing me, when I pot them up, I probably will just uh, go ahead and give them away instead of just uh, killing them. So one, two, now these ones I'm spreading. 
about an inch apart. You probably can't see in the cam that camera, but I have my other one up here so I can have you pointing down. So hopefully it's catching this. And one. There. So what I'm going to do uh, after I've got them all seeded is I'm going to press them down into the soil a little bit and then I'll cover them with vermiculite. So let me get this one. This one's going to be genuine. Genuine. And I will put that right there. So that will work just fine and dandy. So these ones, 70 to 75 days, that's a pretty good rate of them coming to fruition. This is 65, the tiny spoon. I haven't got them. Where, where's my other one? Uh, tiny Tim, germination. It doesn't give you a rate of when they're supposed to come to fruition. I don't like that when they don't give you all the information. Okay. Definitely, definitely want my beef steak. So this one should tell you minimum full sun, 8 to 12 hours, 24 inches apart, ideal temperature, sprouts in 7 to 14 days. Um, again, doesn't give you a time frame of when they get ripe. I'm sure I can look it up, but it would be nice if they had it on the packaging because... You know, I will go with tomatoes that ripen earlier in the season. Like, I love um, early girl. I thought I had early girl seeds. I'm going to have to find those. If not, they usually have them at the garden centers, and I can grow, uh, pick one up. Now, one thing, Green Acres, where I often go, it's an, about an hour and a half drive for me, but um, it's my, one of my favorite nurseries. It's big. It has lots of choices. They have very good prices. But they will probably have early girl soon. And I can pick one up and keep it inside until I can put it outside. And they might even have a six-pack, which makes them a little less expensive. Okay, so there is the beefsteak. Lots of seeds. This is where you should go in with friends um, and buy a pack, pack of seeds they'll, seeds. they'll buy one. You can buy a different variety and then you can swap them because there's so many seeds and keeping them, you can keep them, um, but that doesn't always mean they maintain their germination rate. Okay. Unless you're really good at protecting seeds. Some people are better than I am. Okay. And this one was beefsteak. Now, sowing things from seed is not difficult. Uh, yeah, some people are intimidated by seed starting. And um, and that could be, you know, a lot of times people don't have success at first. You have to try, try again. And it's really a lot of fun. I prefer it over, you know, just buying plants only because there's such satisfaction and growing something from seed, watching it sprout, and then planting it out, and then watching it thrive. I'm just pressing all these seeds down into the soil, firming them down. It's not really necessarily covering them. I can sprinkle some with a little bit of soil um, over top. But I have one more row left, and I'll go ahead and do my Camp Joy. Anyways, um, so please don't be afraid to try. And um, some people can start seeds right directly outdoors, but many of us can't. We don't have the climate for it or the growing season, especially for things that take a while to come to bloom, like um, petunias. Some people can start them outdoors. I had so, uh, someone comment on my one where I started petunias and brought them indoors, and um, she was like saying that just didn't suit her because she prefers to start them directly outside and she saves her seeds from season to season. And that's great if that works for her. But the majority of us have a shorter growing season. And if I waited until I could direct sow outdoors, I would not see tomatoes, or not tomatoes, but petunias until late August, early September. And I want them sooner. So that's why it benefits 
many of us to start indoors if you have if you can some people start on a windowsill that works for them you don't have to have all the grow lights etc i just know that because of the situation of my house um, i don't get enough sunlight on any of my windows to start in a windowsill and um, so that's like a new point i it just wouldn't work for me so that's why i start indoors it is such a such a joy in the winter cold winter months to have the ability to have plants inside to work with them it just keeps my mind off how long winter lasts here and um, it's a complete joy so it's no, no bother i'm going to put camp joy so everybody's situation is different and we all learn to garden in our own area and how that works for us so, okay, I have another row left, and I will put my um, Super Sweet 100s there when I find them. So, for now, I'm just going to go ahead and over the ones that I've already got in here, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of soil. doesn't take a lot. I'm going to avoid this area here because that's not got any seeds in it. Now, you notice this soil is pretty dry. Let me put you down just a hair so you can see a little bit better. Oh, there's a bug, a spider on my lens. Sorry, spider. Anyways, um, but what I will do is I will put it in a tray of water and it will absorb. Now, if you're afraid that it won't uh, do the job, I wouldn't just water from the top. I would use a spray bottle and just moisten, moisten it. But I've never had any issues, so now I'm going to put a little bit of vermiculite, which does hold moisture. And should work great on there. I'm not perfect about it. Be careful when spreading it so I don't dislodge seeds. Now, I use potting soil to start my seeds with. If you use seed starting mix, it's usually um, sterile. But a lot of times I use peat moss, and that is really hard to get moist. And it's, I have not found it necessary. In fact, I have a video and a blog post on seed starting mix compared to potting soil where I ran a test or experiment on using the two different um, soils. And I had no difference. So seed starting mix often can be pricier than just regular potting soil. So that's why I always just use the potty soil rather than having a dedicated seed starting mix. Um, the only downside is like I've had with the potting soil I can get this time of year is usually moist. It's been sitting outside of the garden center or whatever. And um, a lot of times it'll have fungus gnats in it. And that's why I will, uh, where I will sterilize the soil or pasteurize the soil in with boiling water, in the microwave, in the oven, um, and this time I went ahead and added the diatomaceous earth to try to combat the fungus gnats. And then I will water with mosquito bit water. Now this is the mosquito bits, and it's a BT based product, and it will kill um, the it'll kill mosquitoes, but it also kill the fungus gnats and their larvae. So yeah, that's one of those deals. Okay, there we have sown the tomatoes. As I said, I will put this in water, let it absorb. I will also put a plastic cover on it, probably plastic wrap, and these little markers will kind of hold it up, and that'll help keep moisture in. And I'm going to put it on one of my heat mats. That also speeds up germination, which is always a good thing. So there's my tomatoes. We are going to start. And when I find, like I said, when I find my super sweet 100s, I'll go ahead and add them in this row. Okay. That's down. I guess I could set them over here. My greenhouse is already starting to fill up. So finding space in here is a challenge at times. So what was I going to do next? I, was, oh, I just spotted my peppers. I really need to get my peppers started. So I did the Rebecca that. Have you ever tried these peppers? These, um, this one is natapeno, which is a jalapeno that has no heat. Now, my husband is very sensitive to the heat in peppers and stuff. Um, I am less so. 
only because I seared my taste buds when I was pregnant with my second child. I craved jalapenos so badly that I would grow big bags. I wouldn't grow. I would buy big bags of them, um, and I would eat them just constantly. I would get blisters on my lips. And because I craved them so much, I just went right past the heat. Well, ever since then, uh, you can't ask me if a food is hot or not because it won't be hot to me, but it will be to everybody else. So that's why I say I seared my taste buds because it, it doesn't matter. I love, and I love super hot things. So habanada. This is also um, one that has no heat. So they're not supposed to have any more heat than a bell pepper. Now, my natapinos last year did really well, and they were delicious. Um, the habanada, though, all of a sudden just died. It was doing beautifully. It was getting peppers, and all of a sudden died. So I don't know, but I'm willing to try it again. And, you know, I should probably go ahead and put it in this container since I don't know if I'll find my super sweet 100s. Um, and I should just uh, go ahead... Like I said, and do this, and I'll put a little marker between them because these take the same type of conditions as the tomatoes. And um, yeah, I think I'll grow a few extra and I'll give them to friends who lived lower down in the mountain so they would get peppers sooner than I, and then maybe they would share. So that's method to my madness. So let me get these. This is the first I'm starting with a habanada. Hopefully, I'm in the camera over here. And I'm just laying them. I'm sewing six of them. And it's stuck. And I just scoop them up with my finger now. I know a lot of people will use a toothpick and moisten it. and um, I have found that that doesn't work great for me. For some reason, it doesn't want to come off the toothpick. So I don't think that will fit there. I'm going to have to cut this in half. And go from there. So I'll put habanada. I can just put haba and I would know. So when I put the marker in, again, I will show you, I will put the word towards the plant that I just sewed. Now I'm going to do the natapeno. Now last year I grew these in the raised bed um, in front of my DIY greenhouse. Um, and it's a nice hot spot. But this year, I'm thinking maybe this raised bed up against the greenhouse because it gets the heat um, too. And then it also gets the collected heat overnight from the greenhouse will radiate out towards it because we can get cool nights in this, even in the summer. We can get down into the 50s. And um, peppers and tomatoes and stuff like that, they like it to stay warmer even at night. So that's why even though I'm a zone eight, be um, many things that would come to fruition or ripen for many others earlier uh, mine will be much later and that's because of the cool cool nights and that is why I assume um, like the proven winter super tunias they don't do well for me at all um, they might start blooming well towards mid-September even if I get them early in the season and all I can guess is they are a type of petunia that likes the warmer nights or the nights to stay warmer. It's also why um, the hibiscus, the hardy hibiscus, um, I have one that my husband bought me like 20 something years ago and it was just Dixie Bell something. And it won't bloom for me until September. And come to find out, um, the hibiscus to bloom, they need nights above 60 degrees. Well, that's rare for me, usually. We might get it late in the season for a couple of weeks. So that's why um, I had tried the Proven Winners hibiscus, the beautiful ones. Oh, I just love hibiscus, and I loved them. But I didn't get any blooms. And that's because they need those warmer temperatures. So even though they are hardy in my area, I didn't get the blooms. And isn't that why you buy them? So that is why those two plants that I would absolutely adore in my garden, um, I just don't grow them. So, or I did, I did and I gave them away because they didn't bloom for me. Alrighty, yeah, 
I went out there to get these jugs and it's even starting to drizzle again. So the clouds that moved over after having beautiful sun um, are now creating a little bit of a drizzle. So, so here's the containers that I winter sewed some things in. Now I got this because I'm going to see if I can see down in it without opening them up. Because it would be kind of a pain to open them up and shut them back up. But, you know, I'll do it if I have to. So this one is Pink Peach Hollyhock. And I was going to see, let me see if I can see down in there. Yes, I can. So you see down in there? I'll show you here. Um, there is the peach pink double hollyhocks. Aren't they doing be gorgeous? Now, the funny thing is, I have another hollyhock out there called the Watchman, and it's not got any germination yet. So this one is my Lauren's Great Poppy. Look at that. Aren't those gorgeous in there? Just a ton of them because I had a ton of seeds. So um, I still have some left over and I sprinkled some out in the garden. That's the beauty of once you start some poppies and get them going, that you'll just have them forever. So this is apricot peach parfait. Now you see there's a few in there. I did uh, sew these a little more thinly. So that beautiful. And here's some agrostoma. Now I don't know if you're familiar with that one, but look at that. Now I have grown this in the past and didn't do well with it. And then I have learned uh, recently that it's a cool weather flower. So it prefers blooming earlier in the season because I had planted it, I don't know, probably later. And um, I was unimpressed with how many blooms I got. So knowing that, um, it, it just now makes sense. So I will grow, I love it. It sways in the wind, it's so pretty. Now, which one was this? I don't know if this is the pink one and there's a white one um, that I really like, but yeah, I wanted to plant that and get more. I had the seeds already, so I made sure, and they just loved winter sowing. So that's another win with the winter sowing process. Alrighty, um, I will bring you up to date. I'll update you on the rose cuttings. They are doing beautifully. In fact, some of the rose stems, cuttings that had rooted and I potted up, I'll link that in the description box below too. Um, their roots are already coming out the bottom. And I planted some, I potted some up in these clear containers. And you can see the roots down the side. That's why I really love these. You can see the roots, so I know they're growing strongly. Um, yeah, it's gonna be impossible to do the delphiniums today, they're still all covered with snow. So that, like I said before, is gonna be up and coming. And um, you wanna get them when they're smaller. So hopefully I'm not too late. I think the one out in my rose cottage garden starts later because it gets more shade there. So that one what might be the one I do the demo with. Um, and then by the way, a friend had started some from seeds and she's giving me a few and we're trading, I'm trading her eggs for the seedlings. So I can never have too many delphiniums. That is all there is to, to it. And I have a bunch more to start. I have a bunch more seeds. So that's coming up too. Okay. I think that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed planting tomatoes with me and all other chats about the, uh, you know, the progress on this. There's a lot of containers out there that there is no signs of life in, but they may need a little bit warmer, consistent weather to do so. And then there are others out there that are blooming. I had the Oriental poppies that I planted and they've got some growth in them. My um, daisies, uh, there's some seeds coming up in there but I can tell they're not daisies so I have no idea what they are. I thought for sure I planted daisies in those but who knows what happens. Alrighty, friends, I will see you in my next video where we will be up to more fun stuff. All right, bye.